Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's session of Glory of the Giants here on Swindler's Den. We've missed you. Have you missed us? Well, we better get into this game so that we don't miss each other. But first, I think I think we might have an announcement happening for the channel. Grizz, do you want to announce something? Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> it's like we have an announcement. <laughs> um, yes, Spelljammer uh, Losers in Space will be making a return soon i don't have an official date yet because we've not started recording yet but we've all agreed upon a time to meet which means it is in development <laughs> <laughs> so be sure to be looking out for that follow the discord we'll update you there as well as uh, subscribe to the youtube channel um that does mean uh, to make this work we do have giants going every other week now which we kind of were um uh, doing that naturally anyway. Uh, so it doesn't really change Giants too much as how it's been lately. Um, so you guys can keep up with that. And plus, it, it spaces out your content, so you have more time to watch things, uh, which is always helpful, I feel, as an audience member. But anyway, um, we do have another show that is currently running as well. Uh, uh, Pathfinder 2E System, uh, Abomination Vaults. It's uh, GM'd by Mior. Uh, and a lot of familiar faces on there. So if you haven't checked that out yet, want to figure out a new uh, a new game system alongside us, you can join us over there. Otherwise, I think it's time to introduce my players for tonight. You already heard from them. We have Grizzlock. Oh, hello. I'm Grizzlock. You can find me on YouTube under that same name. The one with less subscribers, because the old one has more subscribers, but it's it's D D. Um, anyways, uh, I am playing Kelborn Kerrigan, the fighter, the ranger fighter, half elf with red frizzy hair and freckles. <laughs> I don't know. I, I never, I feel like I'd never mentioned the freckles before, so I figured I should. <laughs> I think it's on the character. I mean, it's hard to see, but yeah, no freckles. Now, you know, a little, little more tidbits for Kelborn himself. Speaking mm -hmm. of known a little bit more, we have barely caffeinated. Hey, I'm barely caffeinated. Uh, you can find me over at Crits and Coffee on YouTube, where I am running the. Um, what am I running? What is it called? Uh, Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, uh, with a few of these cuties over there. So come check it out. It's been a lot of fun. Um, also, going to be releasing some Wildermyth gameplay soon. And if you don't Ooh. know what that is, you should check it out. It's a lot of fun. Um, and tonight I am playing as Siegfried, the Asimara cleric. Speaking of some cuties, we have Dr. Phage. Hey, I'm Dr. Phage, or Adam. You can find me on Twitter at Little Growth. Uh, the only plug I'm going to give tonight is I will second the Wilder Myth. I got obsessed with it and played it for several hours over a weekend, and it is a 10 out of 10 game. Um, and tonight I'm playing Benjamin, the Half Elf Warlock. Ooh. Speaking of being obsessed for a weekend, we have Kyle. Yeah, I've been obsessed with Dragon's Dogma. But hey, it's me, hey, Kyle. Somebody does. <laughs> uh, you can find me over at the backyard picking up some apples. The humans <laughs> didn't want to pick it up themselves, and they brought in some pigs. And it's, it's, it's a whole weird. ordeal. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, I'll be playing Kev Horn. Uh, what am I? <laughs> It's been a couple of years. fighter. I know I'm Bugger Zombie. will be your uh, DM tonight. GM? DM? Which one? It doesn't matter. <laughs> DM. Because it's Dungeon Master. Um, and last time, our group were cleaning up some things in Luskin. Benjamin had just led a, uh, a murder, a small murder, um, on the Temple of Umberly there in Luskin, where the group also had to fight a baby kraken, um, which kind of helped to ease their minds on the whole ordeal. As they fled, uh, a storm giant emerged from the ocean upon the back of an ancient dragon turtle and laid waste to the northern half of Luskin before heading, well, kind of during, heading north, northward, northward, northward. Um, the group reconvened after Benjamin kind of readjusted the ideals of the people that were still alive at the Temple of Umberly uh, to make it a Temple of Miriandra. 
Um, they reconvened, talked about what just happened and what they wanted to do going forward. They decided it was still best for them to make their way to the cloud giant castle that they had seen previously, hoping it was still in the vicinity, which it was. Uh, they approached and saw a cloud giant farmhand looking over a flock of uh, cloud sheep and giant rams and great blue oxen uh, and also some guard dogs, two-headed dogs that were guarding this flock as well. They talked with the cloud giant for a little bit, learned about the uh, anniversary uh, parade of the Duke and Duchess that was happening currently. So they, the Duke and Duchess aren't at the castle right now, uh, but they're on parade amongst the other cloud giant kingdoms uh, in leading the royals of each of those kingdoms back to this castle for a great uh, anniversary ball that will be taking place soon. Um, the group uh, boarded their griffins and flew up to the cloud giant castle in which they came across, across a, uh, a vast uh, cloudscape um, leading up to this giant castle. And this is where we are now as all of you are kind of landing near a guardhouse um, that uh, kind of greets you to this expanse of this large cloud courtyard. Um, you can see off in the distance uh, uh, some giant swans swimming in an enormous pool. Uh, there seems to be some kind of topiary garden further off uh, and uh, litters of statues um, throughout this cloud space as well. Um, of course, the giant castle in the back, this very uh, romanticism-esque architecture, um, lots of towers and spires that make up this castle. And you do see not far off from where you are, another cloud um, space with a large building on it as well. It's not connected to this cloud that you are on currently. This, like the cloud you're on currently is kind of made up of multiple clouds, um, but there is like a larger one a little further off as well but you land near this guardhouse uh you can see some ballista on top of this uh building um but you don't see anybody like really moving about you do see a few cloud giants moving through some of these gardens further off and walking around this large pond uh just seem to kind of be relaxing on this nice sunny day in the clouds um so there's not any like active patrolling guards just the guard house yep you don't see any active patrolling ones um i'm assuming there's like windows on the guard house yeah uh it'd be a little bit higher than you're standing but you do have griffins you could fly up to them they seem to be um, about 15 20 feet up i was just gonna send huey up and oh yeah his eyes yeah, uh, you send Huey up and he looks through this enormous window. Uh, looking inside, he does see, uh, seems to be five lightly armored cloud giants, um, kind of this uh, whitish, bluish skin. Um, they have like spears, but nothing, and like swords on their sides, but they seem to be pretty relaxed. Uh, there is two of those large two-headed dogs in there as well, kind of just sitting by the doors. Um, and you can see, like, they're sitting in chairs, they're kind of just relaxing. There are ladders going up to the roof uh, where the ballista sit. Um, I'll, I'll have Hugh hang out there. He's just a bird. It's fine. Um, I'll turn to everyone else, though, and say, <clears throat> it doesn't look like, I mean, there's no active guards. Do we think we need to introduce ourselves to the guards, or should we just go to the castle? Let's just look like we belong. Great. Also, um, what's my name? Um, well, you introduce yourself as yourself below. If you want a different name, that's fine, and we can do different names up here. We should all decide that now, though, if that if we're going to do that. And I <laughs> I think also after you say that, I immediately switch to the spores so that no one can overhear us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I always forget we can do that. Yeah, yeah. It's a running um, bit at this point. <laughs> <laughs> do we want to go by aliases? Um, do we two? Uh, 
Um, the only one, I mean, I was going to do a whole introduction thing for us. So for doing aliases, I need to know that now. Oh, okay. Um, two. I'll be, I'll be Kev Foreign. Okay. Okay. Um, two, we possibly don't need to, um, it would really only depend on if any of these people are well versed in the Fey courts, and even then they'll know we're lying regardless. Um, and I think the only one who would really know that is the Lemurian person, prince, wizard. Um, and if he's here, I think we're fucked anyways, so. So do you think it's best for me to just it, it could put the spring court in jeopardy, but just be me. I mean, we're saying you from the, you're from the summer court, regardless. Okay. We had agreed upon that I, last time to keep then, the heat off of the spring court. <laughs> let me start working on an accent. Good, good. This will be interesting. You keep practicing that as we walk in. <laughs> <laughs> Quietly, please. Make sure you can do it as you speak giant as well. <laughs> <laughs> Probably going to be real rough in that accent. <laughs> yeah, it's um, kind of... Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, then I would just... Um, again, in social situations, Benjamin seems to take the lead. Um, so start walking forward, um, leading my griffin next to me, since I don't know what the stable situation is, uh, towards the castle. See if anyone stops us. All right. All right. Yeah, you're kind of moving through this cloud space, and when you're on, like, the actual cloud itself, your feet and legs, like, sink in pretty far, almost up to your knee, uh, and it's a little wet, um, but you kind of make your way over to what seems like a pathway, almost like compacted snow, um, and you're able to step up onto that pretty easily, and it looks like there are it is made to be a pathway. It kind of goes around buildings, and you can see it loops around uh, this giant pond. Um, yeah. And you like you see the path. It makes a circle around this pond. Uh, to the right of the pond is this large topiary garden. Uh, you can see, like, small walls that encircle each garden space. Um, and if you take the path to the left, there's not too much on that path other than a large statue uh, before you take the path to the castle that kind of goes back uh, in between the statue and the garden space. Um, I don't necessarily want to get closer to it, but again, everything's giant size. Can I get it? Can I see anything on the statue, like a nameplate or a plaque or something like that? Uh, give me a perception check. <clears throat> Actually, I'll have Huey fly over. Um, okay. Just look at yeah. it and then quick uh, flip into his eyes. Yeah, he flies over. When when he's that close, it's easy enough. You can see um, it is, it seems to depict uh, two cloud giants. Uh, one has a more feminine form, one a more masculine form. Uh, and they seem to be dancing, uh, the female in front and the man uh, behind. Uh, both have their like raised hand, hand in hand, uh, and they're looking at each other lovingly. Doesn't seem to have a plaque or anything on it, but. Okay, I'll just, I'll return then and keep walking and have Huey uh, just kind of like making slow circles above us. Okay, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you start walking, uh, you just see this large uh, marble fountain in the center of the of the uh, swan pond, with the seven large swans swimming around. Uh, they don't really seem to pay attention to you. Uh, this is kind of going about their thing. How big are these swans? Uh, about elephant size. Ooh. Okay. Yep. I was <laughs> just yeah, making sure that swans. was the scale we're talking about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. So yep. like, that is <laughs> that is a scary. Good distance away from the giant <laughs> yeah. swans. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid hard. of normal size swans. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but uh, beautiful white plumage and these uh, brilliant orange beaks as they swim through the water. Um, yeah, luckily they aren't paying attention to you because uh, they could run you down pretty easy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, as, and like as you get close to the statue as well, um, you can see the statue isn't made out of marble like a lot of the other structures here, but seems to be sculpted from clouds mm. um, in a more solidified form. 
uh, and you keep making your way towards this large castle. Again, none of these giants even seem to pay attention to you guys. Um, they're just going about their days um, as you scurry around on this path uh, towards the castle. Scurry? <laughs> well, to them, you're kind of scurrying. <laughs> Uh, and you get to these enormous, uh, like, again, climbing up these steps. Uh, not as hard as it was with the stone giants. There aren't as many as there were there. Um, but you get in front of these enormous doors standing in front of you. Well-crafted and carved wooden doors. Mm. With enormous brass uh, uh, ring knockers higher up, like 15 feet up from you. Mm, I didn't think about that. Do we think these are push or pull doors? Uh, they seem to push in. How strong are you feeling, Kevor? Uh, no, 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 I will. Because it would be much cooler if we could make this entrance on our own and not have a giant open the door for us. <laughs> Kefhorn will exhale. Go backwards. Like. Beefy. <laughs> Do a full sprint and try. <laughs> Wait, what was this? A pull or push? Push. Push, push okay. And he will try and push the door. Can All right, I give assist? me an athletics check, please. Or are you going to... Can Sorry, I use uh, Maturgy to assist this? Uh, so it says I can instantly cause an unlocked door or window to fly open or slam shut. Uh, yeah. Uh, as Kevorn runs at this door, you cast... Uh, what does that Maturgy look like when you're doing this? Um, so, uh, as you guys have noticed before, I, I would say his eyes, uh, begin to glow. And now that he has his little, uh, head wings, uh, those begin <laughs> to flap furiously as well. Um, and that's right. And, uh, with Kev Horn's push, you know, making him look even cooler doing it, uh, opening up these doors with him. Yeah, you like you feel yourself impact with the door and they just easily start to swing open. You know, the one the one you hit swings open as well as the one you didn't hit swings open. So there's these two doors swinging open uh, into this large welcoming parlor of the castle. As the doors open, I'm going to say through spores to everyone. Remember, we are royalty. And if at all possible, just keep that in mind. And just, you know, we're, we're royalty and servants of royalty here. Um, as soon as you said royalty, Kefhorn will straighten his posture, <laughs> spin his hands, and then such a hide fix his hair. That's right. Make sure you look okay, good for, okay. for me. <laughs> uh, Siegfried um, watching Kevhorn does the same thing. Great. Good. Good. That's the the energy we're looking for. And I <laughs> will, again, confidently stride into the room. Yes. Yeah, you stride into this large uh, welcoming space. Again, m almost everything in this building is made of marble or like the walls are made of stone, but the staircase that's, uh, there's uh, two staircases kind of curling up around this, uh, what seems to be a large room in front of you that, with closed doors, um, but two large staircases going upwards uh, on either side of this large door. Um, and to the sides, you see two other doors uh, that seem to go to the lar other larger rooms. So three doors in this room, one ahead, two to either side. Um, and then the two staircases that curl up on either side of the room in front of you um and like a lot of uh like white uh rugs running up the stairs our carpets running up the stairs um 
there are large marble planters with these green leafy uh, plants coming out of them as well uh, in the space, but it, this, at least this space, seems pretty empty currently. Um, I am going to assume, because I think Benjamin would also assume, that the doors directly forward would be the throne room, whatever, of like... And if this, uh, the royal hand, uh, Arthok? Mm-hmm. Arthok. Um, that's where Benjamin would assume, uh, he would be. So, um, Benjamin would continue walking forward towards the double doors. All right. Directly in front. All right. Everybody just following? Where, where are my grapes? I asked for grapes 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Which one of you has my grapes? I look at Cat Horn and Sigrid. Oh, there's no one <clears throat> going for it yet. But good, good, good on you for staying in character. <clears throat> oh, my, my lord, I, I did not re- receive this uh, request. Um, like are you rustling <laughs> through his bag? Are you calling me a liar? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> um. Uh. He grabs a ration out of his bag. <laughs> <laughs> Is it grapes? <laughs> uh, the, the, if if you are um, peckish, my lord, uh, this should this should. Um, I can't afford. Just puts out in the sports. I, I'm running out of vocabulary. <laughs> I will. I am. Look past your your shortcomings this time. But just know that uh, the summer court will be hearing about these transgressions. Just uh, echoing in this empty chamber that you're in. <laughs> Get forward, we'll go down and uh, yes, my lord. <laughs> yeah. As Kevorn gets down on his knees and bows to Kelborn, uh, Kelborn, you do notice something strange in this very spotless, well kept room. Um, you do see something behind uh, one of the large marble planters to the left of the door in front of you. Um, you can kind of see like a frayed rope uh, that then ends in a knot and then continues into braided rope and then another knot and then it kind of goes behind this planter. Now, get, get up. You're making a scene. Come on, get up and you can make it up to me by investigating that thing over there. You see that rope? What's that all about? <laughs> Get forward, wall. Well. Two spores. I hope, I hope your next meal <laughs> is cold, damp, <laughs> as he's walking by, walking to the the place he wants me to investigate. Yeah, it's like 50 feet across this room. Kevhorn has to walk to get over to this uh, rope. Uh, and as you get closer, you see the knots that are make, that are in this rope are about the size of your body. Um, and as you get over to it, how do you approach it? Are you being cautious about it? Or are you just like, oh, it's a rope. I'll just see what it what it goes to or whatever. Um. Well, first, you guys will see Kevhorn's walking differently. His uh, again posture is straight. He's trying not to. What's it called? He's he's lifting up his feet and he's not like dragging it <laughs> to look even more proper Get across the floor. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, he's just walking up to the to the rope. All right. Um, just a moment. I want to make sure the audio is loud enough for me so I know what it sounds like. <laughs> I've heard it before, but um, yeah, you get over to this rope. And you see, again, it kind of curls behind this uh, marble planter. Uh, but you do see it's, again, these large knots. There are one, one, four large knots uh, in this thing that each about the size of your body. Um, and the rope that's braided together is incredibly thick as well. Uh, it seems to be three sections and then the phrase on the end. Uh, and as you get closer, this wo- this rope is pretty well worn. Um, and is a little wet. 
I was gonna climb it, then you said what? <laughs> um, yeah, it is just laying on the ground. It's not like connected to anything. Oh, oh. Sh is this a dog toy? I think it's a dog toy. Is there a bite mark? Yeah, there's bite marks in it. Kev Hornwell. He was like kneeling down, or not kneeling, he was just like bent, bent over trying to inspect this. Seeing there's right marks and it's wet, <clears throat> <laughs> he will start quickly walking back towards <laughs> the group. <laughs> and through spores, he'll say, There's a dog, there's a dog, there's a dog, there's a dog, there's a dog. <laughs> I mean, we saw a bunch of dogs outside. It's not surprising that they would have palace dogs as well. Yeah. I, I don't know if this dog wants to chew on something other than that rope. Um, I mean, we'll cross that bridge if it comes to it. <laughs> um, you know, I, I really don't want to be that kind of servant, but I think it could be interesting if I, you know, bless the path that Kelborn walks. I can just, um, that sounds... he just pulls his hood up and takes out his sensor and starts, uh, walking, you know, kind of beside Kelborn, but flinging his sensor out in front of him. That sounds good. Um, alright, so, <clears throat> I wanted to ask you who, <laughs> this is the show that I'm talking in my head. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, who here is a dog person and who here is a cat person? Um, I'm an I'm an owlbear person. What if you had to choose between a dog and a cat? Which one? Well, I never had guess. dogs at the monastery, and I think cats would frighten Brother Suffermouse. So, um... I forgot your. <laughs> <laughs> You guys bring your griffins with you into the palace. Yeah. All right. They're, they're like, it's. A, I'm assuming I was also thinking about that. This palace is more than big enough to accommodate them. Yeah. <laughs> um, you start walking forward to this large door in front of you. Um, again, two staircases on either side of it. Uh, but you get to the door. Um, very similar to the uh, to the first door. Large uh, knockers, about 15 feet up. Pushes it. Kefhorn will do the same because he didn't see someone helping him. <laughs> hey, give me athletics. Um, I'll assist him again. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I never get to use this. <laughs> you can roll it, so. Oh, your gun? <laughs> yeah. Your revolver <laughs> that rolls dice? Yeah. This this little guy, <laughs> you, my camera can't really pick it up. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, okay. Neat. So, fourteen plus eight, twenty-two. All right, yeah. You push. Um, you can feel yourself pushing the door, and then they just start to swing open on their own again. <clears throat> my lord, <laughs> the way is open. <laughs> hey, remember why? You, oh. It, what? I, it's slipping. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, now I remember why we uh, brought you along, sir. You really, you really should get a pay raise. Um, yes. As these, <laughs> as these doors swing open, uh, you do see this large uh, chamber. Um, it seems to have a lot of like seating space, large benches leading up to um, a single step that has two large thrones on it. Uh, these marble thrones that have like wisps of cloud coming off in the seat uh, area, kind of like cloud cushion cushioning. Um, and you do see two cloud giant uh, what seem to be guards standing on either side of these two thrones kind of come to attention as the doors swing open. Uh, and there are other seats kind of on higher platforms, uh, tiered platforms behind these two large thrones. Uh, but all the thrones seem to be empty. 
Uh, there just seem to be these two guards in here that come to attention um, as the doors swing open. Uh, kind of look confused for a moment uh, until they spot uh, all of you standing there. Oh, what's the uh, small folk? Uh, what's the meaning of coming into our the royal chambers? Uh, we are holding the audience currently. Or are you some of the vermin? I hold my hand out toward my scribe and uh, whatever the other word would be <laughs> for Benjamin. <laughs> Scribe and I don't know the right word at the moment. It'll come <laughs> to me. Ambassador. Um, I would step forward and say, projecting loudly in giant, we have come here as the entourage of Lord Kerrigan, looking for audience with the Duke and Duchess as part of their anniversary parade. Ah, yes. yes. We oh. were told that the Royal Hand Arlthok would be the one to speak to in here, but no one has deigned to guide us, so we are doing the menial labor ourselves. Oh, um, yes, you're a few days, well, not days, you're just a little early. Uh, if you if you mean to uh, speak with Arl Thok, uh, I believe he's holding chamber uh, in the parlor room upstairs with uh, other guests. Or would you like um, escort up there? Yes, we don't know the layout of this castle, and we would prefer not to continue stumbling through chambers trying to find the appropriate people to speak with. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, Apologies, uh, somebody from the uh, guard house should have accompanied you up here. Um, uh, one of them begins to stride forward uh, to meet I, you all at the door. You hear the heavy I've, footfalls of his sandals as he moves forward. I very elegantly hold my hand and motion a come here to Benjamin. <laughs> I respect I'm telling you, to, it, it's a, I'm telling you to come closer. Mm hmm. I do. I lean um, in your ear. Uh, perhaps we should ask if the Fomorian um, uh, is here. The uh, Fomorian leader, or or any any one of note, uh, as we uh, from the Fae do often have discourse. I'll inquire. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'll wait until the giant gets closer and we start making our way wherever we're going, assuming upstairs. Yep. He strides up to you, large sandal foot lands next to you. Uh, if you will follow me, just not too closely, as to not to accidentally step on you. Um, I will also through spores, because he said upstairs, correct? Yep. I will also say through the spores, use the griffins to fly up the stairs. We're not going to climb up behind them like fools. And continue uh, following him. At this moment, he does say, would you like uh, your mounts taken to the stables? Um, they are very well trained and housebroken. Um, considering the size of this establishment, again, beautiful palace, um, they assist with us uh, traveling and keeping up with you, despite our size difference. Of course. A follow after me, then. He steps out of the room uh, into this welcoming area and then starts taking if you were facing the doors that you just entered uh, to the royal chambers, takes the left staircase up. Um, kind of go up. It does uh, end in a land or it doesn't end in a landing. It comes to a landing uh, with a hallway going down to your left, but he continues up the stairs further uh, and it curls around up to uh, a second floor. Well, the third floor, kind of, because the second floor is where the landing was. Um, 
where you see these large doors to your left, uh, as well as kind of the open holes that look down to the uh, to the welcoming area. Um, but he walks past these two large uh, uh, holes into the space with four other doors that lead to rooms, um, but takes you to the farthest room to your left. Um, uh, as he, he stops at the door um, and knocks on it. Uh, oh, Before we get in, I would ask, like, just as we're going up the stairs, oh, yeah. um, what other, um, as we were one of the shepherds below mentioned that other royalty had already arrived. Who are the other um, people of note here that have arrived already? Well, I believe currently um, he is holding chamber with uh, one of the storm giant uh, princesses. Uh, she has come early. Uh, I don't know that we're expecting many others, uh, but a majority of the guests will be coming with the parade. Of course. Storm Giant Princess, that is quite the honor to have. Yes, attend. yes. The eldest of the three. Uh, kind of knocks on the door, uh, and you hear a voice from his side. Yes, uh, what is this disturbance for? Um, and, you'll, and the guard will say, uh, more guests for the... Uh, for the uh, uh the ball tomorrow anniversary ball oh i from inside <laughs> i didn't expect any others uh but let them in uh, we could they can join our council um you know the guard will open this large door swings in front of you and you see this large uh warm room uh not as many of the whites and grays that you've been seeing leading up to this more like red almost velvet like chairs enormous chairs uh with golden tassels um or like around the uh, the fringe along the bottom uh there's a there's a fire in the fireplace along the wall um and you do see sitting in these chairs a large cloud giant a uh, large like very uh, floofy hair um, almost up into a pompadour um, wearing whites and silvers uh, in this like very um, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? It's a very fanciful shirt. Uh, can't think of it. <laughs> um, but like very floofy pants as well. Um, and sitting in one of the other's chairs a large uh, female storm giant. Um, she's kind of got a grayish purple skin a little bit darker um a dark purple and blue curly hair um it's like runs down her back um she's wearing a lilac co co colored dress with a dark stone kind of around the sternum that connects the bottom of the dress to the neck strap around uh around her neck uh with no shoulder covering fabric um as this, uh, this scene is out in front of you, uh, and you should see the confused look on both their faces as you are all the ones to be entering. <laughs> um, and you see uh, uh, Arlthok kind of, oh, I didn't expect any more guests, much less small folk guests, as he kind of stands up from his chair. Um, and who do I owe the pleasure of greeting to our pre-party, as it were. Um, I am going to, as I start introducing everyone, um, cast major image above us, um, and it will take the form of this, like, 20-foot cube of just, like, millions upon millions of uh, flower petals, just, like, all slowly uh, drifting in an invisible mm. wind of sorts i love it um <laughs> and i will say i am benjamin of the freezing depths seneschal of the winter court and as i do that i will use my action to then cause the petals to then form an image of a ship moving through an ocean striking an iceberg and then sinking i'll step to the side and say, 
and I am presenting Brother Siegfried the Painbearer, Scion of the Upper Plains to the Winter Court. Motion to Siegfried. And again, the petals will change to now be the symbol of Ilmater. Adjusted, though, to have three sets of wings, uh, two at the top, almost folded in as if they would be covering eyes, a large middle set slowly flapping its wings, and then a smaller set underneath also slowly flapping its wings. Sir Kevhorn, the shield of the mountains and personal guard to Lord Kerrigan. Um, again, changing the petals to be a mountaintop uh, covered in storms. And then as a trident rises up from the center of the mountains, the storm clouds dissipate into the distance. And finally, a flower Lord prince. Kelborn, <laughs> hmm? A flower prince. <laughs> <laughs> Flower Prince! <laughs> Lord Kelborn, the Flower Prince of the Summer Court, said it. married to Princess Irene of the Winter Court, the Lady of the Scintillating Brightness after a blizzard. And this will also then um, change the, uh, finally, a large sword being made out of the flower petals and a small pixie will like appear out from behind the sword, circle around it, and as it circles it, there is then a wreath of flower and thorns uh, encircling the sword. Oh, fey royalty. Very well, very well. Um, of course, well, you're welcome to join us. Uh, we were just speaking of things. Um... What brings you uh, to the to the anniversary of the Duke and Duchess? We have many ways of learning of important events and hearing that the Duke and Duchess were celebrating such a momentous anniversary, we felt it was appropriate to visit and show our um, appreciation of the event and their long and happy marriage. Of course, of course. Or, uh, uh, as you know, they're out on parade currently. Um, we should be expecting them when they arrive. Of course, they take the as the time as they please. Um, Indeed. We also traveling from the Fey. Time is a bit tricky, so it's unsurprising that we arrived a bit early. Of course, of course. Well. Uh, uh, we were just speaking about, uh, uh, Princess, uh, Bleska's father's discovery, and she kind of turns and gives him a glare, um, and he stops what he says, of course, but, uh, we can move to other things, such as goings on in the Fae. Uh, I'm sure you've got some pretty amazing happenings going on. Summer court, you said. Uh, that is right. I am from the summer court, and uh, it has been a wild ride. Let me tell you what. Uh, yep, uh, we're making an alliance with the winter court as they uh, are kind of the top dog right now. It's kind of a big deal. Oh, what's an interior accent you have? <laughs> Never been to the Fey myself, but... Uh... Seems like quite the kingdoms they have going on there. Making an alliance with the Winter Court. Uh, of course, you've got to make alliances where you can to move up, I suppose. Right, right. And, you know, with Summer Court folk, we, um, we're not really ones for war. And, uh, Winter Court, uh, they... I don't know if you heard. They, they kind of took over the spring court. Oh, did they now? The winter court made some strategic additions to their court. Right, so... Happened to be part of the spring court's realm. Right. So we're, you know, we're getting ahead of the game. We, we got this this marriage proposal going. Uniting in our kingdoms. It's going to be a great, great time of peace. Yes, it sounds like it will be great time of peace. 
I do an insight check on this dude. Is he mm -hmm. believing our bullshit? Yeah, do an insight. <laughs> Does Calborn have a cape? Uh, you know, I don't think I do. This is like one of my <laughs> only characters to not have a cape. <laughs> I was gonna be like waving it as you were talking. <laughs> that's not. That's not. If I see you like start to do that, immediately spores you. Like, I don't fucking touch his cape. That's not royal behavior. <laughs> we need a spell to do that. <laughs> um, I got an eighteen on my insight. Yeah, he seems to be making small talk with you like he like he's not really interested in what you're saying he's just uh talking with you to yeah. keep you interested um or like keep you satisfied he's being um polite. yeah yeah like it's yeah it's not that he doesn't believe you or he does believe you it's just like oh yeah that's that's cool yeah <laughs> it's like a little bit he, like he seems like he thinks he's grandma. above it's this like, oh yeah, yeah grandma good i'm glad to hear about sherry next door yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah, he, he almost seems like he, he thinks to be himself above this conversation. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> um, we do not wish to intrude too much. We have also just arrived. Um, is there a place where we may freshen up and rest as we await the Duke and Duchess to arrive. Of course, we have plenty of guest quarters. Uh, I could have one of the guards show you to a room or multiple. I don't know your situation. Um, the orchestra is currently practicing. If you need to brush up on your ballroom skills. Uh, otherwise, you can walk amongst the grounds. You take your Beast to the stables, if you'd like, on the neighboring cloud. There's just... Was there any, like, bridge situation back from that other cloud? Oh, you didn't see one. Okay. Um, our mounds are actually very well house-trained, and we brought them mm -hmm. specifically to assist in... Obviously, there's a bit of a size difference between us in more easily navigating your expansive path. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Well, just make sure they aren't pestering Cirrus, Nimbus, or Cumulus. They are very well trained, but they are known to go after vermin if needed, so... That was Cirrus, Nimbus, and Cumulus? Yes. Um, of course, we will keep them uh, well in line. Again, they're mm. very well trained. Of course. Well, is there anything I can do for you before getting someone to bring you to your room? Um, um, I will, before I say anything, look to the Prince of Flowers um, <laughs> to kind of give the final say of us leaving or not. Is there anything else you wish, my lord, or should we retire for the moment? Um, you know, actually, I was wondering if there, uh, if there's a table for the wedding gifts, or if that will be set up later. Of course, uh, we can take those now if you'd like, or we will have a a gift taker upon the eve of the ball. Okay, I'll uh, I'll bring it on the eve of the ball because I still need Perfect. to wrap it. Of well, course, of course, of I, course, I'll probably have my my servant Siegfried here. <laughs> yes. do the wrapping. He he yes. is much more uh, skilled at these sort of things. Hmm. Yes, of course. I don't want to frivolously waste your own time doing those sorts of tasks. I understand. I knew you would. All right, uh, he, he kind of claps, just these loud, loud thunder claps to all of you <laughs> as uh, <laughs> um, as the a guard, the guard that brought you up here, kind of appears from around the corner. Take a lovely fay court guest to the room, please. Um, uh, one room for you all, or do you desire more? I believe one will be sufficient for us. Thank oh, you. perfect. Yes, of course. More than enough accommodations for small folk within a singular room. 
Indeed. Kind of like oh, trying to give it a little bit of that smile of like, it's funny. Like I like we're in on a joke here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Are the, there grapes uh, the... in this room anywhere? No. Shit. There are like like the they're drinking uh tea from these large teacups, but doesn't seem to they are like um <clears throat> uh they seem to be some kind of not breadsticks, but they're like kind of like that shape. Uh like more of a harder breadstick kind of thing. <laughs> I see. A I cracker see, breadstick kind I see of. <laughs> you do also have Olive Garden here. <laughs> 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 Almost like a pretzel stick, but not quite. Uh, um, but yeah, the guard waits <clears throat> for you to uh, start to follow them, uh, and they lead you back. I to will. Before, on some of those before we leave this room, um, I will both thank Arl Thok and then also make a point to bow to the princess. And say uh, it was a pleasure to meet you. Hopefully, we can speak more um, at a later date. As she nods her head to you, likewise. I also give the most regal possible bow, as I know how to do this, as I was <laughs> actually trained in royal sure. affairs. I will, as he starts to bow, I will immediately spore him and say, remember you're a prince, remember you're a prince, remember you're a prince. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't bow too deeply to them because oh, yes, you're of yeah, equal yeah, yeah. status. <laughs> Kelborn knows this. Yeah. yeah, like I just like Benjamin is panicking because this is working so far. So it's just like we can't fuck this up. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, uh, the guard leads you back down that staircase um, and leads you down the hall of that first landing that you had all uh, come to. And as you're walking along this corridor on your right side, there are these, again, giant doors um, that seem to lead to quite a few rooms here uh, and to your left there are large window panes that overlook this enormous um grand hall ballroom area and you can see uh a giant orchestra uh these enormous cellos and harp playing um as there are also a few uh cloud giants in there practicing their ballroom dance as well and uh, he leads you to the furthest room in the hall um, and opens the door uh, to what would be a cozy space uh, for these giants. But to you, there are these two enormous beds, um, a large like foot uh, uh, pan uh, to like wash your feet in. Um, and yeah, a large room for you. And if you need anything, of course, feel free to ask. Could you send up some refreshments and hot water, please? Of course, we will send up uh, one of the maids with some food for you all and drinks. Any specific drinks, tea, water. Grape juice. Grape. I'll see if we have any grape juice. <laughs> <laughs> And he turns to walk away. Yeah, uh, close the door. Yeah, push the door closed <laughs> against the marble. <laughs> oh, okay. We've oh, wonderful. It. We have our own pool here. <laughs> <laughs> that is something. Oh, should I still be doing this for us? <laughs> <laughs> That's up to you. You've decided to have that accent, so <laughs> you can choose if it's better to keep si keep saying the accent or to stop doing it. <laughs> I don't know if I could stop if I tried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's... Okay, we'll have to work on that when we get out of here. Um... <laughs> I would like to immediately... Um, start looking probably have Huey do it of just like looking for spy holes I will also cast detect magic and like make a slow circuit of it to see if there's any like scrying shit like any sort of magic like in this room any spy holes like physical and magical okay uh, have Huey do a perception check 
Um, as far as your detect magic, you don't get anything other than the all the magic nonsense that you guys are all carrying. Perfect. So Huey got a natural one. He sees nothing. Yeah, yeah. He, you do. There are two large windows because you are on the end of room. Uh, you do have two large windows in this room that overlook. Um, like you're kind of near the edge of the cloud in this room as well, so it overlooks the vast space uh, land below all of you. Um, it's very far away, so it's like almost just green. Huey's eyes can see a little bit better, um, but it is mostly just like greens and browns uh, below you. Uh, but yeah, he doesn't notice anything else. Um, do these windows open? Nope. Okay. They're no. yeah, they're just set in the wall. We so. Can deal with that if we need to so where do we think the the gifts will go after the wedding do you think they get added to the vault um probably not for some time after the ball i was why i was just thinking that perhaps i go on my own to the wedding and you're all inside of one of the bags of holding. And that's my gift. And then when they put it in the vault, you're all in. How, one, is that possible? Two, how much air is in a bag of holding? I don't know, but there was a man living inside of my bag when I <laughs> turned it over. So... I have to assume that that incident didn't just happen. Before How you I described it. that shop, it very well could have just happened. <laughs> you got these for 150 gold. I don't think he's running that tight <laughs> of a ship. There, nothing else has come out of that bag, has it? Have you turned like? Have you made sure like all of his stuff isn't in there? Oh, I turned it he didn't inside have just, out. Like a tiny house inside. I turned it inside out, and that's when the man <clears throat> came out. Okay, okay. I'm glad it's empty. Um, I don't... Um, I don't love that plan, because also, how do we know when we're in the vault? <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> <clears throat> also, it may be slightly suspicious if we don't show up at all to the vault. Even as lowly servant. You mean I could say... I just felt that they were... They, were, they weren't elegant enough for this party. More is, important question is, what am I going to wrap this gift, gift with? We have no, no wrapping paper. <laughs> That's... <laughs> The least of our concerns. I feel like, like in the order of concerns we have, these are <laughs> the wrapping of the gift is low. <laughs> okay. So are we saying that the the bag of holding idea is out? Um, I don't, I don't know how we would execute it. Ooh. Although the more I think about it, I don't hate the idea. Well, I do on one level, but I don't hate the idea of you going to the ball alone while we try to do a bit of a escapade. Right. It would be good cover to escape while everyone is dancing. What do you think the job title of the guy who brings things to the vault is? Depositor, um, malt, hmm. man. I would guess probably the royal hand does that. I don't think they want That's a bunch of people cool who's going in and out of the vault. Title. Um, because I was thinking maybe if we could find a way to like somehow get the bag of holding into his hands and say. This is to be delivered to the vault. But they would have to believe that we were, you know, like the giants or something, someone of importance. 
we could do a ruse of we have valuables to store. Do you have a place to ensure that they are safe during our stay? Oh, that I... is uh, questionable. Okay, no, this would have to be like it's the king's orders that this is brought down to the vault. Hmm. I don't know if we'd be able to pull that off. Hmm. At least not without magic? I mean, what? Are we talking the king of the summer court? Or King Hag? No, yeah, I was just thinking more someone, someone cloud giant important cloud giant I believe the Duke and the Duchess are the highest echelon here. And I don't think we'll be able to lie to their own staff about their orders. That would be a hard sell. Mm -hmm. we also, if we can locate the vault, we have the key for it. So getting in isn't necessarily the tricky part. I don't remember getting the key to the vault. <laughs> Cavorn got it from the giant goddesses when he was saved by them from the uh, mm -hmm. gods trying to pull him out of the portal. That's one of his little treats he got. So would this be a giant key he's just been carrying around this entire time? Uh, when Kevhorn got it, it what it was giant when Diane Castro, one of the three giant goddesses, had it, but she did like a hand twirl and it turned small. So at one point it was giant. It's currently normal key size for you. Wait. So how do we get it back to giant size? <laughs> Are the keyholes large enough for us to crawl through? Uh, looking at the one to this room, yeah. It depends on how many mechanisms are inside. Uh, the more complex the keyhole, there's probably more to crawl through, and it might be hard okay. to do, but possible. But let's just assume here that the most, you know, lucrative vault full of things in a cloud giant temple... Is, or kingdom is going to be magically as well as physically sealed. Yes, that would be my assumption. I will also say in this room, the keyhole is both ways. That's not going to be the case for every door. Some doors will just have a keyhole on one side. Yeah, because there's no reason to lock a vault when you're inside of it. <laughs> um, I would also, with that... One, I am assuming when we put the key into the giant keyhole, it will then turn back into a giant key, because that feels like some goddess magic that's possible. Just kind of hoping. Send up, like, a quick little prayer to Diane Caster, like, I hope you got her back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why don't you just ask those gods to put us inside the vault? Why didn't they do that from the beginning? Put us in the why would they put us in the vault so then we can, how would we escape because so we, we didn't have the, the stuff back then they put us in the vault we get the stuff and then they take us out of the vault don't i don't i'm not following this plan I just and i mean that truly, i don't understand what like what's happening it's just if the gods weren't lazy, I feel like they would have put us in the vault instead of giving us the key to the vault. Oh, uh, if the gods weren't lazy. Mm-hmm. Gods, gods don't meddle in human affairs. Well, they gave Kevhorn a key? <laughs> I'm half... Cuban. <laughs> half meddling. <laughs> Oh, here's that. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I will say, because this is, was such a long time ago, Kevhorn, they were... Uh, Siegfried's right. Uh, gods 
can't interact with human uh, mortal affairs. Um, they were able to get around this because one, Miriandra did it first, so that's why they were able to grab you. Uh, and second, they gave you the key that happens to go to a cloud giant vault. They didn't say, take this key and go steal from the cloud giant. <laughs> that's kind of- It feels how, implied. And, and, and Diane Caster <laughs> is like a, a goddess of trickery. So it was mm. kind of a loophole to get you something that might help you. Yeah, it's a very much like, I gave you the key. What you do with the key, that's up to you. Yep. I just gave but you the key. But what she told me with her eyes is go steal from the cloud giant vault. <laughs> What I told you when I heard we had the key was that we were going to steal from Cloud Giants. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. And we definitely don't want to try to convince the Cloud Giants to side with us as opposed to with the other Giants. See, that is... That's kind of the sticky situation I feel like we're in, in that... It would be nice if we could convince them to no longer support the st Storm Giants, even if it is behind the scenes, incidental, and not full, um, obvious support. But also, if we are going to rob them, hopefully blind, that may damage those relationships. If we could find a way to pin it on one of the other giant kinds. It is a possibility. I could do something. Um, that would last for 24 hours, so it would be nice, but it takes 10 minutes to cast. So it's a little bit of a commitment, but if we're already inside, then we have <laughs> bigger things to worry about. <laughs> uh, pun intended. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think the first order of business is to try and locate the vault. Which I was going to just turn Huey invisible and kind of just set him loose on this palace to see if he can find anything interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just, I have Huey turn invisible um, and just tell him, like, we're one, don't say a single word, please. You will get All right. by enormous dogs. Why if somebody um, asked me a question? No, you're going to be invisible. Hopefully they don't see you. Um, mm. If they do see you, act like a bird and fly out a window. Um, two... We're, I mean, you, we're looking for the vault, so like, it, it, places that look well secured, let me know if you see anything interesting, I'll pop in, let you know if I think it's interesting as well, um, just to get an idea of the layout of this place. Alright. Um, and I'll have him scoot Boogie out through the keyhole, because he's just a little bird, so he should be able to fly through there even easier. Yeah, um, he, as he's flying through the keyhole, you do hear a boom, boom, boom on your door of somebody knocking. Come in. His door swings open. It's, oh, just bring in by your food and beverages. Um, I apologize. We don't have any grape juice, uh, but we do have this hundred-year-old grape wine from the vineyards here on the cloud. I, th I suppose that'll do. Thank you for your kindness. Of course, um, I try to accommodate small folk as much as I could. I cut up all of the food into smaller pieces, as small as I could make them. Uh, and I have thimbles for your wine. Uh, they're still rather large for all of you, but uh, just drink it slow. It like, sets down <laughs> this uh, giant platter on the ground in front of you. And, yeah, the thimbles like come up to your waist. <laughs> You like Good. stand in these Good. buckets of <laughs> wine, effectively. Good. Uh, thank you very much. We appreciate the uh, accommodations you were providing. Of course, of course. She steps out, uh, bows as she does, and closes the door. And Huey is off in about, flying about. 
keeping like occasional taps to make sure he's still alive of just like okay still alive great and yeah <laughs> i just like if he finds anything interesting to then um because he can communicate we can communicate across any distance while we're on the same plane of existence yeah. have huey do an investigation check that's not going to be great he's why do i have huey do anything he sucks <laughs> every time i roll for huey it's what <laughs> You know you're bad. Um, that's a five. You know. I'm bad, and I should feel bad. <laughs> you got a five. I found a dog toy down here. We squeak, already squeak. saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, like, it's a lot of doors. Um, yeah, and yeah, like the guest rooms seem to have the the two way uh, uh, door uh, keyhole. Uh, but a lot of the bigger rooms don't seem to have that. Okay. Um, does he get any sort of idea of like where even the royal wing would be? Um, he does. Like upstairs seems to be where a lot of the where the Duke and Duchess probably would spend most of their time in the rooms up there. Um, there seems a lot be a lot less foot traffic up there. Uh, and there is five rooms that he can tell by the doors up there. Uh, the ones that are right at the top of the staircase seem to be the most fanciful of the doors. Uh, so you could probably assume that's like their sleeping chamber. Okay. Um, he, he would also know that the staircase that went up to the right, uh, so the opposite staircase, uh, seems to go to more of like... Uh, there are a couple of what appear to be guest rooms over there, but it is a lot of the back hallways uh, and rooms for the, uh, uh, the servants of the castle. Um, did you find any staircases? I know we're in a cloud, but yeah. any staircases going down? Doesn't seem to be anything underneath. It just seems to just be the three floors above the cloud. Okay. Um, I'll have him make his way back then. Um, okay. Was the... I... Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> was the um, castle like anchored in any way? Since people are gathering at this location, they don't want it moving. Uh, it doesn't seem to be. No, but does it seem stationary, or does it seem yeah, like it's, it's like it's not drifting around? It seems to be just staying in this spot. I don't know if there's how they're controlling it. I mean, there has to be some way that they're doing something magically. If there's a castle sitting on top of it. Uh, and like other structures so earlier we were concerned that the castle may be moving so we couldn't use hagax uh, but if we know that accent it took me a second to realize what the fuck he said <laughs> I, was, I was i i've been workshopping names i was thinking like haggis like uh or like have a great ass summer yeah, it, no, an X instead of Haggix. It's a, Haggix. I, I'm working on it. It's a good name. It just took me a second to realize what you were referring to. <laughs> um. Right. So, um. Um, you know, odds are they probably have more than one vault keeper. Um. And if we happen to know who goes on to duty, I could track him. Find out where he goes. That's a great point, actually. Instead of having Huey come back to us, I'm going to have him, like, station up so we can see the on the third floor those two of the more... Um, two of the fancier doors. Um, and have him let me know if anyone goes into either of those okay just like those just those two doors specifically okay uh yeah if you have something else so you can start speaking sorry i didn't want to interrupt no um it doesn't seem that's a great idea um it doesn't look like there are there's no like obvious crypts or basements of, or anything in this castle um Shockingly, didn't find a dungeon, which I feel like every castle should have. Maybe they just throw people off the so, side, or they don't take prisoners. So is there a chance that it's on a separate cloud? It seemed like the stables were on a separate cloud. 
Um, perhaps? I was also thinking it may just be in the royal apartment. There are two doors on the third level that seem to belong to the Duke and Duchess. They have similar levels of filigree. I have Huey watching them. If anyone goes in um, to your plan, uh, Siegfried, that may be one possible location we would have to see if we can get someone inside or maybe Huey inside or... Eh. Maybe I could have Huey go around to a window and poke in. I'll, we'll wait. Um, just to get an idea of where this vault may be. I have, like, dipped a normal, like, emptied out my water skin of water and just, like, filled it up with wine and slowly sipping it out of the thimble. Like, filled it from the thimble into a water skin, so I'm not just, mm -hmm. like, dunking my face into wine. <laughs> um, Have Huey give me another perception check. There we go. Um, okay, that is a 19. A 19. Um, with a 19, Huey sees a few things even on his way over to uh, upstairs. Um, he does spot, like, there's a few holes in along baseboards at points, um, kind of in the corners of rooms. Uh, seems kind of strange. Uh, he also knows that currently, uh, there seems to be a snoring of some large beast on the third floor. I uh, can't quite pick out where it's coming from, um, but he does know that there is a large beast on the third floor currently. Uh, and while he's watching these five doors upstairs, uh, there seems to be like once in a while, a guard will pass through. It's not like somebody's up there all the time, but they're, they'll pass through the space kind of looking around. Um, and they do, they, every time they go up there, they check the door. Um, like, so when you got up there, immediately to your left, there's the large grandiose doors, uh, double doors that seem to go to what you can assume to be the royal chambers. Then there was four other rooms as again, it's so weird because you come upstairs to the left and then to the right, there are four other rooms that kind of are in this hallway space. Um, if you're facing that way, like you turn right now, you're facing that way. Um, the door to the far left was the one you went into for the sitting chamber. The door before that on your left is the one they check every time they go up to make sure it's locked. It what appears to be they're doing. And then there's two doors on the other side of that hall, but they don't seem to interact with those doors. Um, um, okay, okay, two things. One, there is a vermin problem in this castle. There are holes in the baseboards. Um, how big are the holes? Uh, you could fit in them. Cool. Um, we could crawl in them. Either there are going to be very large rats, or there may just be people living in the walls. Because the <clears throat> Arlthok did ask if we were vermin. Or I think the guard asked if we were vermin. Um, so there may just be people living in the walls here. Well, I guess three points. Third, uh, I think the dogs are sleeping upstairs, so we should be aware of that. Um, Huey can hear them. But perhaps more importantly, um, the door next to the um, kind of sitting chamber that we met Arlthok and the princess in is being checked by the guards every time they go upstairs to ensure that it is still locked. So that may be the vault or may just have something incredibly important inside of it that they are, as part of their rounds, ensuring that it is locked. Hmm. Are there any holes in the baseboards in our room? You don't see any. Okay. So, do you think we take a chance on that, um, that door being the one. It's not a 
bad place to start. Because the ball is happening tomorrow night, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. And the Duke and Duchess are arriving sometime before that. Yeah, probably in the morning, but you aren't for sure. Okay. We may have a night then to just check everything out and possibly even... I mean, we want to gather the totem as well, but... The totem isn't in the vault, then we likely have to wait for the Duke and Duchess, which makes everything more complicated, too. <laughs> but we we could have tonight to um, possibly scope out where everything is. All right. Is there anything you guys wanted to do before nightfall? Um, I am going to make a show, essentially, of um, like going outside, touring the gardens, like all all that type of stuff. Like trying to <laughs> appreciate the space, and seems like I'm um, really living it up here in the clouds. Um, all that type of stuff. Um, but truly just like making sure that people see that I am out and about and enjoying myself in the Cloud Giant Palace. All right. Do you go by yourself or does anybody join you? Um, I would let y'all know that was my plan if you wanted to join. Otherwise, um, I would make up some excuse about uh, the Prince of Flowers wishing to rest before the ball. If you don't want to come. Uh, no, I'll go. Okay. The other two of you go, or do you do something else, or stay in the room? No. Nothing special other than training or rule and <laughs> my owlbear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Siegfried is swimming in the pool. Okay. <laughs> and, I think we're staying uh, in the room to swim. Uh Horn's training his his animals. Kevorn, just give me a quick animal handling check to see how that goes. Shit. <laughs> animal handling. And I do have something else too. Okay. That is a twenty-one. 21 yeah like, your owlbear is already super well behaved like you can just tell it to stay places and it'll just sit there um so she's doing great um uh and her role is really warming up to you as well he'll just like nudge up against you with this large muscle bound body and kind of <laughs> <laughs> lovingly push against you um but yeah you've got these two pretty well trained uh you got something else like for you? Yeah, so as he is kind of swimming in this pool, I guess, um, his mind also kind of wanders about the situation with Benjamin, that if he were to forsake his goddess and leave her behind and attach himself to another god or goddess, what would happen? And if if a god would be willing to take him, would Ilmata be willing to take him, or possibly the goddess that I don't know? Oh. Uh, do a quick religion just for fun. For fun? Um. A. 16. Sorry, 17. Six, 16, 17? Um. Yeah, I mean, it's possible for Benjamin to get a new patron, whether that be a god or other powerful uh, being. Um, it's possible. It just depends on what his contract says to how he would get out of his current one to make a new one. Um, and there are other and even if it's even if that contract is really bound up, uh, there are ways around it with a new one possibly um you would also know your mother from what you can tell isn't in this realm that doesn't mean she couldn't get enough power to 
become part of this realm if she were to have enough followers here. Interesting. Okay. Um, but yeah, you know that. Um, yeah, the other two of you start heading out uh, to the grounds. As you're passing by the windows, you do see uh, the orchestra like stops as the conductor kind of stops them and starts yelling. Um, mm -hmm. and, like all the ballroom dancers look kind of awkward. You just hear the just use the brain. Uh, God gave a giant cloud squirrel. It's doot to do, not deet to dee. Now again from the top. <laughs> Um, he starts playing again, um, and you make your way out to the grounds. Benjamin uh, <laughs> shivers with some memory that isn't his own. <laughs> <laughs> Little shout out to two different brand directors there. <laughs> um, <laughs> then uh, you make your way out to the grounds. Um, do you go on any specific thing first, or just there's the Swan Pond, uh, there's the Gardens. I stay away from the swan pond. <laughs> you do kind of I... have to go to the swan pond to get to anything else here in the ground because it's like the central uh, hub to the paths. But yeah, you don't have to get too close. Yeah, a respectable distance. I'm, we're not looking at the swan pond as a um, feature. Just like, cool, great, it's over there. There are giant yeah. birds that are nasty. <laughs> yeah. What if it? What if the vaults beneath the swan pond? That's a great place to keep it hidden. Nobody wants to fight elephant-sized swans. I will swim in the swan pond tonight. <laughs> Did you see the uh, seven swans are no longer swimming? They have uh, gotten out and are sitting on the far side of the pond. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you can... If, if we need to... I will go and check out the swan pond. Um, is this just conversation just between you two or everyone? <laughs> oh, I didn't realize all the lines were open. <laughs> Sorry, Kev Horn. But, um... I will say that I can help you out with the swimming. <laughs> in the oh. pond. Oh, oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it would be nice not to go into the swan pond by myself if we need to do that. I don't know if we need to do that. <laughs> if we need to do that. We should skinny dip. No. <laughs> you're Just because we already see you naked doesn't mean we need to see the others. <laughs> yeah, you're a prince, remember? You're a prince. Princes don't go skinny dipping in a pond. <laughs> Wait, Can't what? Huey swim? He can swim, yes. Um, I'm going in there with the swans. I would hmm. like to remind you that the prince part is not a lie, and I would, in fact, <laughs> go swimming in a pond. Right, but I'm trying to pretend that you're a more respectable prince to impress these cloud <laughs> giants. One, Also, you're banned from asking for whipped cream or cream cheese. <laughs> <laughs> cream cheese is or a any Dairy based toppings while we are here. You can Fair have enough. milk. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you're moving amongst the gardens. Um, you do see there's actually soil in these gardens, um, and they are pretty expensive. A lot of them have like topiaries, uh, 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 cut to look like dancing giants. Um, a lot of large blossoming flowers. Uh, you do see there is a vineyard here. Um, and you do see kind of strolling amongst uh, these uh, gardens is the uh, storm giant princess, just kind of strolling by herself. I message everyone, but more specifically to uh, Kelborn. Do we want to talk to the princess right now? Or do we want to wait? If we do talk to her, what what are we talking to her about? Um, I don't know. I was, well, see, the issue is I'm your servant, and I was hoping to do a fun little tit -a tat with her of like, oh, ho, ho, isn't this fancy? But if I'm your servant, I can't do that. Um, 
So that kind of ruins it. It's fine. I was planning on being your servant anyways. I just didn't realize it until this point. Um, so you would probably have to do the fun talking and the fun like, oh, 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 isn't this fun? What have you been up to? Isn't this interesting? We're so rich and powerful and have so many people below us. You know, what royalty does. Cool. Yeah, work drops. drops from the <laughs> yeah, it drops his fidget toy. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just a gold coin. I'll leave it. I've got plenty of those. <laughs> that was for the the swimming pond. <laughs> it's not. That's, a that's pond. what swans eat, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe I don't know what giant no, swans um, eat. I mean, I I could do I could do the talking part, but um. To what end is what I'm asking? What do we want out of her? Um, I think the only thing would be to see... Um, which it doesn't seem like much, but perhaps asking about... Since Arlthok mentioned it, you could bring up of like, Oh, I hear your father found something interesting. That, um, could you tell me more about that? I'm a sucker for curiosities, that type of thing. See if she takes the bait and maybe will tell us a little bit something more. Also, maybe be able to get an idea of if she knows who we are and if she's buying any of this bullshit. If you wish, we could also do that at a later point. Give it a shot, I suppose. Okay. We will casually make our way over to the princess. (laughs) Casually, just... Two small folks. Oh, I didn't up. see you there. I'm sorry. <laughs> like she is, even for as being as young as she is, she is almost as tall as some of these cloud giants. Um, just like 19, 20 foot tall. As you walk up, say, "Hey, I didn't <laughs> see you there." It looks down at you. That long, uh, curled hair falling forward as she does. Oh, yes, of course, quite. Um. Prince of Flowers, was it? That is correct. I see I made an impression upon you. Yes, quite the impression. I Um, must say, you made an impression upon me as well. I Just that lilac, you know, uh, dress you had on earlier. Still have it on. (laughs) That you still have on. Sorry, it's a small folk are sometimes... Um, you're rocking it. Thank you. Um, your armor is rather, it, it looks like it works well. It it does. And, you know, I've been traveling, trying to kind of, uh, feel what it's like to be one of my future, uh, um, Sub sub uh help me out here, scribe. Subvert sub uh subjects. Sub subjects. Subservience. I don't know. Mm. I think that might have been what I was looking for. Uh so I figured I'd walk the land, but you know, they wouldn't let me do it without bringing this here tin can on my chest and this mighty sword upon my shoulder. Yes, it does look like quite the mighty sword giant runes, I see. Well, that's right. I mean, there is no better magic than giant magic, I always say. It is rather powerful, yes. Indeed it is. Hey, you know, I, come to think of it, I am a bit of a uh, connoisseur of uh, knowledge regarding magics. And I did hear, uh, just from talks around the castle, that maybe your father might have Stumble across some something or other. You know what that's about? Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> I wish I could assist, but I don't see any way that I could assist with this. <laughs> oh boy. I think it's Kate. Besides looking meek and servile in the um, background. <laughs> 14? It's not bad. I don't know if stumbled across would be quite the word for it. More of 
a long and strenuous search for this lost artifact. Oh. Well, that is... Uh... So he's... He's made gainway. Have you, um... Located this object? Um... Please uh, do tell. Quite. I... I, uh... Yeah, I've been... I've been collecting, uh, artifacts myself. Um, like this. I pull out my... The... The Haggix. And I, like, <laughs> cut a rift. <laughs> <laughs> this... This gets me back to the Fey world whenever I want. Isn't that oh, pretty neat? That is rather interesting. But it only goes to the Fey. It doesn't do anything else cool. I think they just gave it to me because they, they want to make sure I could get back in case, you know, I was needed. I mean, realm jumping is rather strong magic, so... Nothing to toss aside as if it were worthless. At. Hey, I feel like we're really connecting here. Um, your father's never like tried to put you in this, uh, this like planned marriage, right? No, you've never been in that situation. Oh man, let me tell you, I'm in an arranged marriage right now. It's just. Just to co create peace, I just feel like I'm being used for just for me, you know, for my body, for who I, my name, uh, instead of finding true love. And it's just, oh, it just hurts. Uh, how are your, uh, <laughs> what are okay? Sorry, I just, you give me that, you have that face that just, I feel like I can just. Tell everything to you. Just you're are just you so welcome to me right now. No, no, sorry. I, I mean, you are beautiful. Let me say, but uh, I I couldn't do that um, as I am um, spoken for. Yes, yes, the arranged marriage. I'm, I must do what is right for my my kingdom, summer court. Of course. Um, anyways. The portal just closes next. <laughs> so, anyways. Benjamin, his panic level reduces seeing that the portal has closed. So, um, yeah, so, uh, have you ever met that, um, in my head? What's the name of the Fomorian guy? Um, give me an actual second to look that up. If I would have known, I would have already had it. Hold up. I don't know if we know his name. I don't know that he said it. Oh, maybe we don't. Um, I don't think we have a name for him. I don't have it anywhere. Well, um, you know the uh that Fomorian fellow uh who's uh been working with the uh, the Ice Queen. Um he's gonna be, you know, I, I only met him briefly um when visiting you know what's soon to be my new kingdom. Um But uh he gave me an interesting vibe. He seemed also kind of into the the strange magics as well, like I am. Uh, what what's that fellow's name? Oh, uh, oh, you speak of King uh, Lernan. King Lernan. Or, um, sorry, Lord N Lernan. Lernan. And that feller. Uh, he's working with your dad, right? Or is that yes, just? They, yeah. They do have a. <sighs> a mutual uh, relationship going on uh how much have you spoken to him oh he was briefly he was he was i was told i was talking to him about the uh my interest in giant magics you know anytime i come across giant folk i just have to ask him about giant magics and he was telling me all about these sort of experiments he, he was planning on running trying to create some 
some sort of new being or uh, all powerful sort of being. Um, I only caught, you know, the briefest hint of it. I mean, it sounded pretty interesting, but I had to leave. Give me a deception. Yeah. I actually have advantage on deception. Ooh. Uh, it's, it's another 14. <laughs> he does like to speak extensively on his researches. You must have uh, struck a good tone with him then. Can I do an insight check after that yeah. comment by her? I yeah. think it's just my easygoing personality. It's a 17 insight. Uh, what are you looking for with this insight? Um, Both, if I think we've been made in the sense of like, that isn't like... Is that comment because it is out of character for him to say something like that? Or it is in character for Laren to like speak, like if he gets on a rant to then speak more? Or does this seem out of character for him based off of her comment? Um, it seems that she is surprised that he told Kelborn that much, but not that he wouldn't tell people that much, just that he was comfortable enough to do that. I am the prince gotcha. to be. The king <laughs> sort of to be someday. Yeah, great, 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 great. Okay. Again, Benjamin's just like, this is mm -hmm. going well enough. Well enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like she doesn't seem surprised that he has talked to mm -hmm. the Lord, but to that extent is surprising. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I don't wanna uh, you know, I don't wanna keep you all night unless you got time. Um so, uh, I've been hearing that the, uh, these cloud giants, they don't, they haven't really gotten full on board yet with our whole strategy. Our whole strategy? Mm, <laughs> um, okay. no, they, <laughs> they haven't fully sided with right. what is happening. Exactly. But I, be but I believe now with our... Recovery of the artifact, they will be more willing to go along. That's good. That's good. You know what would really seal the deal? I mean, I don't even know what this artifact is, but what I would do, you know what? Your dad's so smart. He's probably doing this. I would bring the artifact here to, t to show them it's, it's raw power. We shall see what his plans are. Yeah, you know, that's that's probably, I don't know. But yeah, no, that's great news. Um, because uh, a strong giant nation is a strong winter court, which is a strong summer court. So, of course, if there's anything I can do for you, you just ring. Let me know. And uh, I will do my best to be there because, look... I just want to do what's right for my people. I'm glad the summer court has seen the correct way to go about this. Well, you know, we're no fools. We know when we're beat. And uh, this definitely the most peaceful solution. Of course. Well, the Duke and Duchess should be here by morning and I'm sure they're excited to hear the news so I must turn in for the evening but I hope to see you tomorrow of course she is, turns and strides away uh, oh. back to the castle bow as she's walking away yes yes you'll cordially bow to both of you as well I think I made a good impression I mean, it was certainly an impression. I think it was good. I think it was mostly good. I've been told I'm good at impressions. You certainly are. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think also, as we're doing this, Benjamin is like a side thing, 
also scoping out the grounds as like cover and escape routes and like how we can use some of this topiary and vineyards to help obfuscate our escape if necessary. Yes, I will say by foot, you will know that going off the path will be make your movement a little bit harder. Yes. And the pathways don't necessarily go to the edge of the cloud, but you do have flying mounts. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, the, like the, the gardens are pretty well uh, grown to the point that they might provide some kind of cover uh, if you were to be moving through them. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Then probably start making our way back to the room. Of course. I do Make pick up that back gold the, coin on the way back. Pick up, pick up your gold <laughs> coin, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything anybody else wants to do before evening tide? I don't have anything else. Um, what? one last thing. Okay. Is the dancing still happening? Yeah. Are they have they gotten the hang of it? It seems to be going better. Okay. Um. Can I uh can I jump in and give it a shot? Yeah. Uh give me a performance check. Can I have advantage for all of my training in courtly things? Yeah, yeah I'll give you advantage. Let's go. <laughs> Just dancing by yourself. Uh that's uh I got a giant partner, man. <laughs> uh if I have to. Uh that is a twenty-five. A twenty-five, yeah. You uh, do find uh, a giant partner <laughs> to join with. Obviously, you're just like by their feet <laughs> trying to avoid getting stepped on, uh, but you do it perfectly uh, and are able to keep in time uh, and keep in movement uh, with your giant partner uh, and are actually pretty impressive uh, amongst uh, everybody there. Yeah, I could have taught this class. That's all right. <laughs> if you guys need any pointers... Let me know. <laughs> um, there are a few like other giants that uh, will will ask you to practice with them uh, to dance, um, and you dance into the evening. Oh, the sun begins to go down behind the cloud, and it all becomes dark. All of you have reconvened in your room. It is currently nighttime. How do you wish to go about your evening plans? Um, does it seem like we should be expecting an invitation for like a dinner of any sort or is like, or has been, has more food been brought to our room? Yeah, uh, you do at some point, uh, get a knock on the door. Um, just guards dinner shall be ready within 15 minutes. If you'd like to make your way to the dining hall. Excellent, thank you. Of course. Walks away. And thanks be with you. <laughs> um, I feel like we should at least make an appearance at the dinner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent, okay. We're going to look like fools. Yeah. But... Uh, um, well... Oh, sh uh, oh man, the, the voice. I... Yeah, I'm just practicing for tonight. Um, do we have anything nicer to wear? Because uh, I feel like it would be a bit uh, this. This, you know, I was I grew up in a courtly setting, and this is not the attire that you wear to these dinners. I do. I have both my the clothing I bought in Luskin and um, some of my other nicer clothing with me. Are lowly servants allowed to attend these dinners anyway? Who else would cut my steak for me? Who else indeed? <laughs> Not it. <laughs> At least we have our own bag of mustard. <laughs> that we do. That we do have a bag of mustard. 
Um, maybe don't use it. I mean, no, it's just yellow mustard. I forgot. It's not fancy mustard. <laughs> it's a bag of French's yellow mustard. <laughs> maybe don't. Do you think they have hot dogs? Oh, lordy Lou. Um... No, don't, I'll be on my best behavior. I've, I've been to plenty of these before. I have every faith that you will comport yourself. You've been doing an excellent job at this so far. Yeah. I chose a stupid voice, though, so I feel like everything I say is sounding stupider than it should. Honestly, it doesn't hurt our perception if they think of us a bit comical or bumbling then they're less likely to pay attention to what we're truly doing. Uh, it is an accent from the, the summer court, though. In truth? I believe you. I've never been. Not a very um, princely one, though. <laughs> it is a tough, it's a rough accent. <laughs> We should start making our way to the dining hall. Then. <laughs> you start making your way, take um, the staircase. Oh, good. Before everyone leaves, just gonna grab my cleansing stone. <laughs> oh, boop everyone. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Change to um, probably like the priestly type robes that he um bought in Luskin. What um? What other clothes did you say you had? You said you had finer clothes as well. I do. I have like I have a well, second set of fine clothes. <laughs> I don't. I truly mean this in the kindest way. I don't think they'll fit you. We have fairly different body. We know shape. magic. Who here has magic that'll make this fit? That's so far beyond my wheelhouse. <laughs> I mean, I like we <laughs> we were in town. I thought <laughs> I didn't think we we're gonna go to a ball. It's fine. I'm the guard, anyways. I don't need to dress fancy. Just um, hit me with that stone. <laughs> I'll leave my armor here and um Siegfried, how are you up braiding hair? Um well most monks are bald. Okay. <laughs> Benjamin will stand behind you and start braiding your hair. <laughs> you know, say so you're like you're out of normal day wear it's not the most fanciest thing but it's not like your armor that's all banged up by getting hit by weapons and <laughs> things like that so you you look better but it's not like super fanciful um, um it is clean so that's a bonus <laughs> i druid crash because that's the thing i can do yep um some galliandras and uh i ask you to braid them into my hair <laughs> Yeah. Braids them in. Do you make do with what you have uh, before you make your way to dinner? Heading down the staircase uh, to the to the um, welcoming parlor again, and then uh, in the door that would have been to your right as you entered uh, is the is the uh, 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 the grand hall eating area. Um, you see, incredibly long table. Um, that has uh, a, like a seat on either side that has a very grandiose chair, but are empty tonight. Um, but you do see uh, the Storm Princess. Uh, 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 I said her name. Bleska is there. Um, uh, the Royal Hand is there, and a lot of the other cloud giants that you've seen up upon the grounds are here as well, all uh, getting ready to eat. And you do see there are four chairs set uh, that have large tomes set on them uh, to make it so you would be able to reach the edge of the table 
uh, where smaller plates are set. Mm -hmm. I gave, mm -hmm. uh, what does, how do you pronounce her name? Bleska? Bleska, yeah. I gave her a little wink. I sit down. She watches you go to your seat, doesn't reciprocate the wink, <laughs> and is watching you. <laughs> where are we positioned on this table? Like, where spatially are we? Far side. Like, wait, like, like, so far side, sorry, far side doesn't matter uh, when you don't know who you're far from. Uh, you are opposite, like the opposite of the table from uh, Bleska and uh, uh, the Royal Hand. Um, you're kind of with, with some of, the, yeah, you're sitting with some of the, uh, some of the people that were dancing. Okay. Or I guess not servants, but yeah. more minor um, yeah. nobility. Okay. Okay, that's good to know as well, like, where they think that we fall in this game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, okay. As you go to sit, uh, um, Fleska does, like, every once in a while, shift her eyes towards you, Kelborn. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just kind of watching. As food is brought out. Pull out, my brain. Uh, these large... <laughs> <laughs> Blush. These large uh, roasts and... Uh, different kind of vegetable dishes are made up and then like smaller cut up portions are brought to you uh like they've cut the steaks down to the size of what would be a steak for you but it is all cut up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i elbow um, the giant next to me and uh say so did you i mean oh i mean um <coughs> uh, did you work any more on that uh that um, pure away. Oh yes, I th I think I have it down, ready for the ball don't, tomorrow. Uh, don't forget to finish with that flourish, you know. Of course, yes, yes, just like you showed me. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted. Oh no, you didn't interrupt anything. At least not for me. <laughs> no, somebody was about to say something. Um, as the meal is going on. Um, Benjamin is going to turn to the giant that's sitting next to him and again in kind of the like we're both in on the joke type of tone of like um, I mean this is all um, such wonderful fare uh, we're so pleased by the extravagance and excess of everything here <laughs> yes uh, I guess it would be access to you <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're small <laughs> small folk <laughs> Indeed. This is very awkward laughter. <laughs> um, tell me, we haven't... Um, obviously, we know the Duke and Duchess are coming. Who Are, are there any other um, nobles of note? And besides the princess, of course, that will be arriving with the Duke and Duchess tomorrow. Uh, well, there will be uh, many lords and ladies of other cloud giant kingdoms to come. Um, of course... Uh, we're in Stratica now, but there's a uh, Nimbilon and he names off a bunch of different other cloud giant kingdoms <laughs> that I don't have names for right now. Uh, but yes, uh, mostly the cloud giants. It, it's rather strange to have other uh, non cloud giant nobility here, but uh, we've been graced with Fey Realm nobility as well as uh, the princess of the storm giants. So the. The storm giants don't stop by often, then. That seems unusual. No, no, not not for an anniversary. If this were a wedding, maybe, but anniversary, though very high thoroughfare, is more of a, a cloud giant uh, only thing. Um, as, as it happens every year, of course. Uh, still important, uh, just not as a uh, giant spread as it were. Like, I wouldn't be going to any hill giant anniversaries if they even do celebrate the sort of thing. <laughs> ah, mm, of course ah, not. Ah, <laughs> that's a good one. I, I, I whisper to that one. <clears throat> you know, I, I heard that King Herrick might actually show up. He's got, oh. I heard he's got some sort of new toy that I heard my allow him to teleport 
Oh, that'd be very interesting if that were the case. We've already been graced by his daughter's presence if he were to come as well. A mic for a big entrance, teleport right oh, in. Oh, yes. Yes, it would. I'd Imagine things you could do with that site. sort of magic. Wow. Teleporting, yeah, that'd be crazy. Places you could get to just in a blink of an eye. Yeah, you could go anywhere if you... I don't know how it works. I've never teleported myself. Me neither. Um, can I through <laughs> small talk? Um, the seeds early. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. Um, I'm uh, scheming over here too. <laughs> <laughs> can I like again through the course of small talk and everything like that? Just try to get one names of more of these like minor lords and ladies of the cloud giants. Mm -hmm. Um, and then two, try to ferret out if any have been ignored or are less pleased with the duke and duchess like what's uh. the, what's the court gossip that's what i'm trying to like mm. weasel my way into um you get a few other names uh one give me a persuasion okay 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 come on don't let me down uh, you let me down a little bit, but it's still a 19 persuasion. 19. Uh, you do get a few other names. You do get one that sticks out a little more particularly to you. Um, a Lord Dyrdice, uh, D-R-D-Y-S-S. Um, he wanted the Duchess's hand in marriage, mm. but wasn't deemed powerful enough for it. Um so ended up marrying the duke instead she would understand my blight my fictional blight <laughs> <laughs> like yeah um, the duke the duke, uh, not the duke the lord is the one that wasn't oh powerful enough yeah is he attending or is he kind of in the outs of the court he is begrudgingly attending he seems to come every year but doesn't care for it from what it seems interesting okay okay i mean it's something it's something to work with again <laughs> we're scheming we're plotting yeah um cool i just keep up this boring table talk to get more information and again a little bit of the like <laughs> we're just funny little small folk ain't it quaint <laughs> that we're here um <laughs> Yeah, you'd, like you'd have to use your own cutlery because they don't have any for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all that fun stuff. They do like put out their toothpicks, so it's still like spears for you to use. But yeah, if you bring your own cutlery, you can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole time Benjamin's just like, they're just laughing at us. They're just <laughs> like, this is just a joke to them. We're just a joke. And it's fine. <laughs> it's just how we want it. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> is there anything Siegfried or Kevorn want to do during this dinner, or anything else the other two would like to be doing? No. I don't think so. Okay. Um. Now I'll wait for the actual ceremony. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Dinner will wrap up then. Uh, the giants will go to their different quarters or off to wherever they are off to be. Um, and you are left to go off to your rooms as well. Does anyone else seem to be staying in our wing? Yeah, there's a few other of the um, uh, cloud giants that, like some of the ones you were sitting by, um, it does seem that uh bleska doesn't have a room in your wing uh, she see she takes the other staircase up the one to the right okay interesting okay good to know though yeah um but you do see like a lot of these rooms are taken so you could probably assume that these rooms won't be used by the other nobility that are coming with the parade uh, you don't know what their situation is going to be. That's also interesting. Maybe they're bringing 
their own castles. Maybe. Mayhaps. Um, so we just like wait until midnight and then start sneaking around. So that's what you want to do? This is like this is to the actual group. Okay. Like Benjamin asks just like so we just like we're gonna wait until midnight and then like start sneaking around or something like that. Seems like an... Oh it's way past my bedtime, but maybe for once. Yeah, this we're gonna have it's gonna be a rough morning tomorrow. Cause like take a power nap now. I'll have Huey wake us up and we got stuff to do tonight. Um, as you are kind of talking over your plans, there is a lot of thum, thum, thum on your door. Who is it? Yeah, I bet, it, I bet it's, um, Bell, what was that woman's name? Bell Kraus, Lek Kraus, Bleska. Thank you. Princess Bleska. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> May I speak oh, no, to you all? No one can resist the char. Of course, we weren't expecting you, princess. Please come in. Allow door me. opens. Oh, go ahead. Siegfried opens the door with his thaumaturgy. <laughs> okay, yeah, nice. Yeah, opens the door. You see uh, so Princess fucked. Bleska standing there. Uh, she is wearing like dark robes um, at this point uh, with hood that's down, uh, but like her long curled hair is like kept in the hood so it's not all the way down her back like it was normally so prince of flowers was it as she strides into the room closes the door behind her flower prince i can't remember (laughs) (laughs) yes that is i so you getting married summer court is getting married to the winter court is it yes it's an hmm. arranged marriage to keep peace between the two. And your... I didn't ask why you came here, I guess. I know... I know that we're working with the Wild, But why are you here with the Cloud Giants? As wedding I, anniversary. As I said, I'm... Uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm a bit of a snoop. And uh, I find myself just so interested in giant magics. Um, actually, funny enough, this sword, uh, and I kind of go over and grab it and kind of holding it out. Uh, I've been trying to reignite the runes, um, and I need to learn the different uh, the different ways of which doing in doing that, and I. I heard about this event and I just thought, you know, who knows what taps could show up here and what knowledge they may bring. Oh, yes, because your cloud rune is already lit up, so you're looking for other runes. Yep. Figure this is a great spot to make uh, make connections. How long have you been away from the Fae? Oh, man. You know how that time dilation works between the Mm -hmm. Fae and here. Uh, if I had to guess, face side. Are we going Fae years or uh, Fae Rune Reed? Fae side, preferably. Okay, let's see. I've been wandering around these parts for a bit. It's, I mean... Hmm. The Ice Queen had just taken Spring Core. It had been maybe a year. So I'd say maybe it's it's been 18 years 18 years and you were marrying the ice queen am i remember that correctly or is a different no not the ice queen her her daughter her daughter of course of course and uh, what do you think of your mother-in-law to be is this on the record my record yes she's wonderful wonderful woman it's on the mm. I, uh... I'm sorry to hear of your loss, then. What do you mean? Is the princess... Something happened to the princess? No. The 
Ice, the Winter Queen has been dead for some time now. I thought you were aware if you were no. keeping in touch with your... Oh my god. to be. Our whole... <laughs> Our, our whole piece is going to fall apart. I got to get back to the fight right now and figure this out for my people. Give me a deception check. Come on. You have advantage Come on these. Why 14? <laughs> Why is that the number tonight? <laughs> I need to roll different she dice. Kind of looks down at you and your, your uh, performance. Yes, well, I'm sorry to drop such news upon you. I'll leave you to grieve. Can I try to cry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can try to cry. Give me a performance. <laughs> 14. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you, you're trying to cry. <laughs> like, there's... There's kind of water in the edges of your eyes. It's... Yes, well. I'm so sorry, I don't. I cry for my people. Of course. Well, you've got plenty to mourn and figure out. Do say hello to the Lord of the Fomorians as you get in touch with these people. I'll leave you to it. I shouldn't be outside of my quarters. Wait. This late in the evening. Before you go, who's responsible? Some small folk, I hear. This is where I'm going to insight check her. Aladrin's? Aladrin's at the Spring Court uprise? From what I hear, a lot of half elven folk. Weird. I've never <laughs> never came across Crazy. any of them. <laughs> half elf, you say. Oh, <laughs> uh, what were the insights? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. I got a natural twenty for a twenty. Natural twenty. She knows. She fully <laughs> knows, but isn't like fully calling you out on it and is for some reason leaving you all to it. So you don't... She fully knows and fully knows that we did it. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. She fully knows that it's you or has put together the pieces of the puzzle that it's you. As far as if she like how much information she's gotten and how much information she's given, you're not entirely sure on how much she's given. You know that she's gotten all the information she needs to put this puzzle together. But has yeah. she told her father or the Lord that you are all here? Uh, that remains to be seen. She doesn't, she's letting like, like, again, she's leaving now and seems to be leaving it you to do whatever you're doing. Um, so you don't know what's going to come of that, but she knows. <laughs> um, can I do, and like, this can be a separate insight check, like with my a uh, courtier background of like is this a case of like she is in a foreign court and doesn't want to like flex her authority too much or like waiting for the duke and duchess to come back before doing anything like do i get any like knowing that kind of like nobility power structure do i think it's something like that or is it just a case of like we're so below our radar it doesn't matter i'm gonna have you actually do a history check instead because it's a different kind of nobility setup <laughs> and that's a natural one, so it all evens out. Oh. Yeah, you're not entirely sure because again, these the you know the giant ordining is slightly different than yes. uh, that, so you aren't entirely sure what her game is here, um, if she even has one. But okay. yep. Okay. Okay. Buddy, well, I, I think, think she... you all good evening, oh, and she leaves. <laughs> good evening, princess. Uh, I, th I think she bought it. No. No. I switch over to spores immediately. We, we've been made. She isn't doing anything right now. I don't know if we have the luxury of waiting for the Duke and Duchess to show up in the morning. We, you think she, she knows? She, she absolutely she knows. knows. <laughs> and a hundred percent, she hasn't done anything about it. Yeah. Surprisingly. 
Is there any chance she's not happy with her father's plans? She is a teenager. Rebellious face. Face. I feel like that conversation would have went differently if she was not a fan of her father, since she knows we are essentially opposing their plan to a degree. I don't, she don't, may not know everything we've done, but she knows what we did in the spring court, which did put a bit of a kink in their plans. Great. So, um, it's a new plan. I mean, we, should we just expediate our plan? I, we need to get to that vault now. I mean, we have to wait a little bit to allow the rest of the household to, because this is like, Soon after dinner, like this wasn't at like 10 p.m. or something like that. Correct? I would say it's, it's probably about 10 p.m. that she okay. showed up. Yep. Um, we should probably give it a little bit of extra time to allow more of the household to settle down. And I desperately want to get that totem for you, Sieg, but I don't know. If it's not in the vault tonight, I don't think we're safe to stay here until morning. That's perfectly all right. Our safety and well-being is much more important than the totem. We can always try and come back and take on the Duke and Duchess when we're stronger after we've robbed them. <laughs> I do wonder if we're making a really big mistake here. Making enemies of the Cloud Giants kind of throwing them into the war she's now that she knows that we're here when the vault goes missing she knows who to point at from what we've heard though the cloud giants are already on their side oh with Hreg with Hreg finding the artifact that was the last piece to convince them is what it sounded like in the garden Do you think there could be a chance that that artifact is making its way here as proof that they do in fact have it? Um, I think that is exceptionally unlikely. It also sounds like the reason the princess is here is to put pressure on the cloud giants that they should be joining or to personally present that the artifact has been found and therefore their hesitancy is unnecessary. What if we stole the artifact instead? <laughs> um, I mean, potentially that involves going back to Icewind Dale, to the glacier, getting back getting past both the king and queen and whatever storm giant guards they have over this artifact now. It's something we can do once we escape here. <laughs> this is bad. But also, we knew it would be bad if we were caught at any point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. Huh. I wonder if we should also, stick around and, um. Sorry, go ahead. I gotta work out um, some things in my brain. Yeah, also, just the fact that we may reduce their arsenal resources that are, is being kept in the vault may I mean it will still weaken them whatever we can remove from inside of there <sighs> what do you you two think we go on with the plan as usual or as a uh, as planned 
Well, I don't quite enjoy the idea of stealing all of this stuff in the first place. But I do know it may be for the greater good. You know, we could return it later, maybe be more like borrowing. I don't think they're going to take too kindly. Too bad. Do you think the cloud giants are just scared? Possibly. They don't seem to be hostile. I think the cloud giants literally and figuratively see themselves as above all of this. Why should they worry about ruling over small folk land when they rule over the skies? They have no real need for ground conquests. That is not where they live. It seems at least the storm giants live in the seas. Um, and then the frost and fight, all of them uh, live on the actual land, but the cloud giants live above it all. And that may be how they're philosophically view all of this as well. And now they have enough of a bargaining chip to bring them on, whatever this artifact can do. Do you think they would be... Do you think they would even be concerned about us taking from them? <laughs> I, I think that is going to be of a concern of theirs. Um, they are a duke and duchess, and how well appointed this uh, castle is. I'm assuming they enjoy their wealth. As a casual refreshment, they brought out a hundred-year-old wine from their vineyards. But if we don't steal from them, do you think they would stoop to the level? <clears throat> I think getting them as allies would be a hard sell. I think the best we could ask for is them not joining the Storm Giant. That's what I mean. Not as allies, but even if the storm giants have won them over, are they really in the battle? So would they actually fight us if they if they feel they're above everything? Would they actually know. come after us if we don't do anything? So I'm not sure it matters anymore with that. Them having the artifact and convincing them they may not join the fight directly, but they can provide the gold necessary for armies. Perhaps it is best we raid the vault. Plus, Maybe the that best means... that we can do. Again, it also sounds like it is not just gold inside of there. There will be items of power that even if they are not extremely useful to us, we can at least deprive them of having it. Well, then that may be our course of action. I think that answers itself. Mm. Straight. The next question is, do I still go to the party? I do have an easy escape. I wave the haggits. I don't think we should remain here until morning. I, I, I just, I am slightly interested to see what happens. Like if King Hreg is going to show his face and the artifact and we can finally get eyes on it and know what it is or what it does. There's a lot of I... intel that can be had. What if Huey just stays here? Invisible? I was going to say that. I could have Huey remain here and continue to spy on them after we have left. That's good. 
That'll work. Rest up a bit, and then we go vault hunting. All right. All right, then. Yes. Take a little bit of a rest as you get ready for your night uh, vault breaking into. Um, but first, I want to do a little bit of a cutaway. Just, just like as a minor scene, just so let people know what's going on in the world. It's not much, but I want to cut back to the night that Kelborn saw the storm rolling through Luskin uh, as things were getting knocked over and wind was ripping through the streets. Uh, what he failed to see was overhead as Stormbird passed through Luskin heading south and two other Stormbirds were taken off in different directions. One to the Cloud Giants, uh, and one to another giant den. As the sisters were sent out to speak with the different giant uh, leaders, is where we'll end our session. So, thank you so much for uh, hanging out with us tonight, getting doing a little doing a little schmoozing and boozing with the Cloud Giants. Uh, we'll see you next time as our group tries to break into the vault uh, to see what goodies they can find inside. Uh, thank you, and let's keep making stories together. <laughs>